CNT 140, we're looking at chapter six on wireless. And we had left off about, you know, kind of the access point. Um, and it's actually not wireless because we do need a wired infrastructure behind the scenes to support that access point. And it's really just the wireless for the end user getting rid of their patch cable. Um, so the, the access points can handle maybe 15 to 20 users. So in a house or small business, that might be enough. As I increase distance or number of users, I might need a second or additional access points. Um, that's when they start giving us some rule of thumbs about distances. Um, and things like walls and partitions in a building can affect all of your ranges. So it might need to adjust based on that. The number of access points depends on how they're being used, you know, how many, uh, how much bandwidth are people putting through, um, the total number of users, the more users, the more you'll need, so you can cut down the number of people per access point, and how big of a space are you going to cover? Um, you're going to cover a large, you know, a convention floor, um, well, there could be thousands of people in there, um, and according, in addition, hundreds, to even thousands of feet. So multiple access points will need to be in there to handle that that the volume of space as well as the volume of potential people um they also remind us that the further away i get from an access point my bandwidth is typically dropping uh back in the days of wireless g uh, if you were close you might get the full full 11 megs but the further you went away it was going to drop and you might even get one meg as you get further away um an access point starts looking like zone cabling and I, that's what we were showing earlier about uh, I would have a cable out to an access point and then just that last part instead of the patch cable we have the wireless connection so again in a network like so this was kind of our network for 120 design this connection here well I need a cable from my switch out to the access point and the access point would be typically installed on the ceiling of hallways or in a work area um, and the access point looks usually something like this. And there's a connection in the back for copper, you know, copper connection. Uh, newer ones have fiber connection as well. So in my structured cabling plan, where I need access points, I'm going to need to put an outlet box above the ceiling, if you will, to be able to plug the access point in. So that'll need to be planned. I'll need to make sure I have them, you know, either down the hallway or around the, uh, you know, convention floor, if you will, up in the ceiling. I need to have a connection for that. Well, luckily, there's a cable um, plan for that, uh, structured cabling standard for that, uh, TSB 162, Guideline for Designing Cabling for Access Points. Um, so I have some links here. This is a good overview. Um, but if you look at the overview, they talk about... Um, Here's the scope, here's what it is, and here's the scope. But what it boils down to is they're like, hey, you should kind of plan out that for every so amount of space, each grid space, if you will, and they give you dimensions here about 60 feet by 60 feet, they're like, okay, for each one of these grid spaces, you should have some kind of cable drop that I can plug an access point into, and I might be able to move it around depending on what the best coverage area is. So on a big convention floor, I would divide that up and start figuring out I need, you know, cable drops in those areas, outlet boxes in those areas to accommodate the access points that, that will potentially be going in those spaces. So it's a good guideline, good rule of thumb to, to plan out what you need. The designer and installer of wireless networks need to think, think about a number of different factors. Well, some of these we've kind of hit already, but let's just buzz down through these. The first one on coverage, yeah, I need to make sure that I have access points that are covering the area. Um, and I might even need to worry about how much they're overlapping. So again, go back to your standards and look at ranges and, and look at that TSB for, you know, your uh, making sure you're figuring out for each zone square, if you will. And then I'm also thinking about my APs and overlapping channels. Another thought here, the book didn't talk about this a whole lot, but I'm at least mention it. On my access points, the type of antennas that I'm using or the type of antenna that's built into the access point can affect the coverage area as well. Um, this is a dipole antenna that was on many access points um, and the the radiation pattern for that dipole antenna. This actually shows you the kind of the coverage area you get with that antenna. Um, so as you see here, it almost looks like a, like a squashed ball. So uh, that'll let you know the kind of area it's going to cover. Well, there's other antenna styles like this guy that's going to be more directional. It's a patch antenna. Here's one that's on the side of a building that's, again, a directional antenna. 
Like there's one here. This is a Yagi. This is Yagi antenna. You might see these if you start looking around at like intersections. You might see these up on top of, uh, you know, above the traffic lights and so forth. Again, a directional antenna. So the antenna design might affect my coverage as well. Capacity, how many users are going to be moving data through? Do we have just casual users? Like I might have, uh, you know, like a hospital waiting room kind of thing, just casual browsing and checking email. Or is this in a work environment where people are moving around large files? That might affect how many access points I put in. Um, the more I put in, the less users are going to be using each one. Um, so it's kind of a plan of like, what am I using for to know how many I might need in that facility? Interference, yes. Um, other things that are wireless in the area can affect the signal. Um, other devices in the area can affect your signal. So I need to think about um, other things that are broadcasting the area. This could be medical equipment. This could be uh, industrial mechanical equipment that might be using any wireless signals or emitting uh, electromagnetic interference might affect my wireless signal. So, and also access points. My access points, if I have uh, access points overlapping too much, they might actually be conflicting with each other. Quick side story. Once upon a time, the wireless signal in our house was, was really spotty. Um, my wife said to me one day, hey, this keeps dropping out on me. Well, I did a quick... Um, assessment of the wireless signal in my area, you can actually load an application onto a smartphone or tablet and look at the um, access points in an area and the just the channels they're using. I was not doing any kind of nefarious scanning. I was just looking at the channel frequencies that my uh, APs around me were using, and we found out that pretty much all of us in the area were on channel 6. So what I did at that point is I browsed into my uh, access point, change it over to like channel 11 to get away from that interference, and our signal immediately got better. A little more reliable if you will. It was not dropping out as well. I got rid of some of the interference is what it amounted to. That might be something you need to do. Um, other sources of interference, building structures, moving vehicles outside, uh, the types of antennas that things will be using, um, even adjusting the antenna placement can affect your coverage and your signal. Um, and here's a picture back from 120, just reminding you all kinds of things could be affecting my wireless signal. So I'm thinking about those things um, and planning for those things or adjusting to those things. And I remind you here about antenna. I might change my antenna location or I might even change, in some cases, my access points. I can change the type of antenna that I'm using to maybe get the better coverage. I might need in some scenarios some sort of device that's able to measure or bring in the actual wireless signal in an area to know what frequencies things are using. Or I might even do, this is the kind of thing I use on my phone. Um, this just shows the uh, uh, the access points and the channels being used near. Actually, no, this is a the spectrum analyzer um, showing different uh, different types of frequencies being used in an area. Uh, the, the, the utility I was using would show the, the access points and the channels they were using. And I saw a whole bunch around six, so I moved my access point to a different channel to get rid of that, that interference. Um, what kind of connectivity? What kind of connectivity I need? Is there, um, can the current network handle the additional traffic? Will the access be points cabled into? Is there space to do that? Or is there space in the ceiling to do that? Um, do I need to worry about some using fiber, some using copper? Um, is there conduit to wire them in? Those sorts of issues. Um, and again, we go back to, I need to wire them in. I'll need to put them usually in the ceiling of workspaces or hallways. Here's my access point. I need a cable into them. I'll need an outlet box up there to plug them into, et cetera, et cetera. Those would all be thoughts that I'm thinking about. Um, with our Wi-Fi standards, um, the committee came up with newer versions of, 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 of Ethernet 2.5 and 5 to handle um, using newer access points on older cabling, allowing a, a newer wireless access point to plug into an older cabling infrastructure that's in there. Um, so that kind of helped with increasing the wireless network without having to increase your cabling. Security, yes. We need to think about um, if somebody adds in, you know, somebody brings an access point or a wireless router in from home and plugs into the network, boom, that is a potential uh, spot of uh, entry into the network. So um, there needs to be thought into 
how the wireless is connecting in. Am I VLANing it off? Am I am I doing certain things to separate from the rest of my network? Um, maybe I'm putting wireless there for just simply visitors and the, any employees are going to connect through VPN back into the company resources. So there has to be a thought into uh, the traffic flow of the wireless users. Last but not least, powering the access points. Um, most access Access points are getting powered through power over Ethernet. As we said before, there is some, initially there were some unused data wires that they use for power, but standards have been upgraded that we can send data and power across the same wires. Um, so your power over Ethernet standard is powering things like cameras, security cameras, cameras, IP phones, access points. Here's even an access point where um, the data comes in here and actually splits out. There was power coming across this, and this splits it out to a data line and power line to plug in and power the access point. Um, so that was a scenario where the, the switch was not able to do it, but you can plug an adapter in to do the same function. We use that for an access point in our church at one point. Um, power Ethernet, the switches for this, ne you need to have switches to be able to do this, and they're going to be in your closet. So your Power Ethernet switches can power the devices, as long as I've planned for that. Um, and not every switch is capable of Power Ethernet. I need to make sure it is. Here's some samples that are. If I look up close and personal, I, I start seeing things like, that is a Power Ethernet switch. If I look at the specs on a switch, and these are actually um, modern um switch model numbers that might be used in a small to medium business. Certain models do not have power for that Ethernet, some do. And they'll even tell you the wattage capability of them. Obviously, the more wattage, the more the switch is going to cost, okay? Uh, but I look at that, and I look at how much an access point is going to consume, and that'll let me know how many can plug into that device. Um, and I do need to plan for that. Um, so I might need, this might be adequate, or I might need to buy a, a bigger model to accommodate the number of things that are going to be powered. That has to be part of my plan. Last thing, um, site survey is the, the, the kind of the, the mechanism you use to plan out your wireless network. I need to walk through, find out what where things are going to go, what areas need coverage. I might even do some test access points. We did that for our church when we hooked up wireless. We put some access points in and did some testing. Then we started moving them around to get the coverage we needed. But there's tools to help with that. There actually is wireless testers and tools that can build you a map of when you have your access points in of what your coverage area is. And if this is the areas you need covered in your building, you're awesome. If you need this area covered over here, well, we need to make some adjustment. Maybe we need to adjust just where the access points are located. Um, and again, I might use some other utilities to find out sources of interference or sources of, of, of weak spots, dark um, uh, weak spots in my um, wireless coverage. I might use that to figure it out. And again, I'm looking for potential interference of things too. So there's some utilities out there to help you figure out the coverage area or the weak spots, dead spots that you have in your wireless coverage. So Thinking back, we do need a cable plan to support our access points to get the data we, you know, the data, data connection they need and also the power that they need. We need that um, for our wireless networks. We need that plan for our wireless networks. And that's the end of chapter six.